welcome to the Lair of the Film Exorcist. Now like last time, before we start, go ahead and tell me down in the comment section below what your favorite Devil May Cry game is. I'd have to say that out of the four I've played so far, Devil May Cry 3 would have to be my favorite, next to the very controversial Definitive Edition, for all the amazing weapons and the great story, and Jester, that really annoying, crazy clown that you get to beat up as a boss in the game. Because tonight, we will be taking a look at Devil May Cry, the series. This is the story of Dante, a superhuman man, who was born of a powerful demon and a human woman, who is a master of gun and sword, and runs an odd job agency. Despite financial troubles, he never loses his cool, since work always comes calling sooner or later. Now on to my opinion. Now for those who haven't heard of this series before, the story takes place in between Devil May Cry 1 and 2, which does give a bit of context for the long gap between the two games, and it's known for its mixed reviews, like some people didn't like how Trish and Lady weren't in the show that much, or some people felt that Dante was a bit different in this show, especially because of his new love of Strawberry Sundays, and others really enjoyed him as a character and liked the premise a lot. Now, if you haven't figured it out by now from the art style, the series was done by Madhouse Studios, who also did anime like Death Note and High School of the Dead. So is this just another flop or a jackpot? Let's find out. I'd like to start by saying that I wish the music for the intro was a lot more heavy metal or rock and roll, like the original music for the fight scenes in DMC3, especially since it would have worked a lot better with the imagery. But I am glad that we did get some during a few of the episodes, which does make me happy. Now despite my complaints about the genre of music, I will say that I don't completely mind it that much, because it is a lot, it's a nice tone, especially with the hint of Egyptian tone hidden within, and it kinda sounds like something you'd hear in a vampire show, which is pretty cool. Now the intro also worked especially well during the some of the episodes, like the third one, which helped with the calm tone, but it can also hinder the hype provided by a lot of the action that happens during the series, which does anger me because I come to these kinds of shows for the action and not the sorrowful, solemn tone or the lighthearted story. Next, let's discuss the characters and the art style. To start, they definitely did the character of Dante perfectly, especially his rude attitude towards characters like Lady and Patty, and his love of pizza, and they also decided to keep in his heart of gold, which does shine through even after some of his most badass moments. But they also kind of messed with him by changing his catchphrase from jackpot to bingo, and then forgetting it completely until the very last episode, which kind of ticked me off but I am glad that they did get the same voice actor that has played Dante since Devil May Cry 3. Now for Trish and Lady, who have new voice actors and are very similar to their original characters in the video game series. But during the show, they have a lot more to shine, especially during the first few episodes where we even get to see the two lovely ladies duke it out in a one-on-one -on -one battle. And we even get to see them mess with Dante a bit by putting him deeper and deeper in debt, which makes me feel sorry for our hero, especially when I know what it's like to be used for your money. But there is the small problem of the color of Trish's lightning, which in the show is blue and not the video game where it's yellow. But I will let it go this time, but next time, just fix the darn color. Keep the continuity already, guys don't change anything. And finally, there's sweet little Patty, who is as bratty as any little girl. So that's a plus when it comes to the character creator, who figured out a way to give Dante someone who could annoy him as much as any demon could. And it's also kind of nice to know that even Dante needs someone to look after him once in a while. Now also, the character designs do look a lot better for this anime than they did for the video games, and that's really saying something despite this anime coming out six years after the first game, and it being an anime. 
Now on to the story, which unlike Cautious Hero, actually has meaning and works well with the animation, with the animated character. So like I said before, the show takes place after Devil May Cry 1, which is where we first met Trish, and it's also, it also came out during the same years as Devil May Cry 3, which is where we met Lady. So the story does keep with the continuity of the game, but it also gives us some further information about Dante's backstory after the death of his mother, which is perfect for those that enjoy the overarching story of said games. Now there are some people that complain about the filler episodes, but I kinda like them, cause they do give us more time with our beloved Dante, who is one of the best fictional demon hunters in my opinion, next to Alucard. And plus, I just like watching him kill demons. So this is definitely the show for me. Also, if it wasn't for the show, I wouldn't have known that Devil May Cry existed, cause this show was the first thing I saw before playing any of the games, which is why I'm playing the entire series now while I watch the series. And this I really love the episode about the twin apprentices of Sparta, for teaching us more about Sparta's past as the king of the demons. And I just love the contrasting views of the two brothers. One who just wants power, and the other who just wants to look out for his brother, who is most of the meaning in his life. Which shows that even demons care about each other. Which is interesting, and I might even say that it made me cry because of how sorry I felt for them in the end. So in the end, this show is a straight up jackpot. And I'm hoping to watch it again another time. Which means, I'm giving it a... 8.5 out of 10 for the great use of the game's characters and the story. But also, I had to lower the grade due to the misuse of Dante's catchphrase, which could have been put in a lot of times during the show, the music, and the little details that the creators messed up. So, I'm recommending this to anyone that enjoys a good supernatural show, or if you're a fan of the game series. But, maybe keep the more squeamish kids away. I mean, this ain't kids stuff, guys. It's knowledge. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys next week to keep my strawberry sundae cold and my pizza hot.